Welcome to Lecture 17 of ECE 4305 Software Defined Radio Systems and Analysis. In this lecture, we'll look at an efficient implementation of a multi-carrier transceiver known as orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So in the previous lecture, we looked at a general form of multi-carrier modulation where we have synthesis filter banks and analysis filter banks and we have commutators and demultiplexers and multiplexers dividing up high-speed data transmissions into parallel subcarriers that are then filtered and then summed together at different frequencies such that they create a composite multi-carrier signal that then gets communicated over the transmission medium. Although this all sounds um, um, uh, pr pretty amazing and uh, potentially can remedy some of the issues experienced by um, any sort of digital communication system, including uh, things such as frequency uh, selective fading. Uh, there are some issues too, with, namely computational efficiency and the complexity of the implementation for a multi-carrier transceiver. Uh, the good news is that in, in the case of multi-carrier modulation, uh, there are some computationally efficient uh, means of implementing um, this sort of transceiver, and one of which is known as orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, or OFDM. So what is, what is OFDM? So OFDM is a form of multi-carrier uh, transmission and reception, as we've seen before. However, uh, it's formulated slightly differently. So let's, let's see. Like First of all, we have the same high-speed digital input, DM, and it too is multi demultiplexed into n subcarriers using a commutator, and um, each individual subcarrier is uh, modulated using some sort of um, um, you know either amplitude or phase modulation, and like let's say m mary qualm. And um, what what ends up happening is uh, recall in the general multi-carrier uh, tran transmitter and receiver implementations we had analysis and synthesis filters as well as a bank of cosine modulators. And so what, what the operation in the multi-carrier, generalized multi-carrier implementation did was essentially after we upsampled our individual subcarrier, which compressed uh, this uh, spectrally uh, the, um, uh, the subcarrier signal um, by a factor of n, and then the filtering operation copies out one of those signals and then is modulated to a specific frequency um, which is then stitched together with every other subcarrier, making sure that every subcarrier is operating and being transmitted across a different frequency so they don't interfere with each other. What OF, the special thing about OFDM is that it was discovered uh, by, and, and published by a seminal paper by Weinstein and Ebert in the IEEE Transactions on Communications that the same operation has an equivalence to using an, in, uh, an inverse discrete Fourier transform, or IDFT. In, in fact, it's, it's because of this that we were able to go from something that was uh, computationally clunky and a little bit complex to something that nowadays we can very much efficiently implement IDFTs and DFTs uh, using either software or programmable hardware or ASICs or whatever, uh, thus making uh, this implementation efficient and cheap to do. So let's, let's actually look at an OFDM transceiver and uh, remembering, recalling what we saw previously in terms of the generalized multi-carrier implementation. So let's look at a basic OFDM transmitter and receiver. So what we have is essentially we have our high speed input and let's say we call it X of M. Okay, And the first thing we do is it goes through a demultiplexer, but a very particular one. We call this thing a commutator. Commutator. And what it essentially is, is it's a rotating arm. And it connects to one of these N leads, okay? And so what this guy does is it takes one bit or several bits for a particular duration T and dumps it onto the first subcarrier. Then it rotates the next guy, and the next several bits are dumped onto the next subcarrier, and so on and so forth. And then, once it completes its cycle, it goes back to the first one to 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 return. So, so essentially, what I'm doing is I'm I'm sort of subsampling 
uh, x of m here and put and 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 putting a unique set, set of bits from each subsampled version of x of m onto each subcarrier such that uh, we have a unique set of bits on each subcarrier now what we then do is we individually modulate those bits into some sort of symbol like uh, QAM or something. So they all go through a modulator and N of them, okay? Then what ends up happening is we need to, um, in essence, what we need to do is we need to feed this guy into our, uh, instead of the uh, upsampling by I and the analysis and synthesis filter banks and the uh, cosine modulation to bring it to different frequencies and such, what we're going to do instead is we're going to take the data from each one of these modulators and at the same time what happens is we're going to also feed this data in here. But uh, let's say, uh, let's see, complex conjugation. So I'll, I'll put um, a little, little that's a, my best attempt at a star. This guy, this guy, this guy. Same thing, complex conjugate, complex conjugate and complex conjugate. And the reason why we're doing here, except for two places, so I should have drawn this a little better. So that we feed something, zero. And here we also feed zero. So the, in fact, why we're doing that is that this guy here, the very first entry of your IDFT, um, the problem is this guy and the nth term. So if let's say this is a 2n, input, so 2n IDFT, what happens is the DC term and the N term don't preserve any sort of complex values. So even if you feed a complex value in here, you won't be able to reconstruct it at the receiver. So essentially we, we, we put don't cares into the uh, first and nth entry of your IDFT. Now the output We're going to have two n outputs. The reason why I arranged it in this fashion, where the first half of n we feed straight in, and then we flip them around. If you notice, I actually reversed the order. So the top entry here is actually the bottom here, and we go backwards, and the complex conjugate. The reason why we're doing it is now the outputs here are real. OK, this is great stuff now. So because now what we do is we take this, And what we do is we do a couple of things. First of all, we repeat some of these guys here, over here. We call this a cyclic extension. Some, some are cyclic prefixes, some are cyclic suffixes. The reason for that, we'll see a little bit later, is that this is how we mitigate multi-pack propagation in dispersive channels. And then here's another commutator. So whereas this is the serial to parallel converter, this is our parallel to serial converter. So once we get the outputs of the IDFT and we also do the cyclic extension business, we have the commutator convert back into a serial waveform. And lo and behold, this guy here is called S of N. This is our composite OFDM symbol. This is good stuff. This is really good stuff. So at the receiver, you do the exact opposite. You take your commutator, you break it up into the 2N, and let's say cyclic extension, you have like repeat L. So so, so, the, so you would have 2N plus L um, uh, parallel entries. You discard the cyclic extension, now, as I'll explain later. You take the 2n point DFT and you demodulate after you recombine it like this, and then you uh, parallel serial convert back into the reconstructed x signal. So, this, so essentially, our receiver does the exact opposite. Plus, there's one stage which is equalization. So, actually, let's 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 draw that very quickly. So, so let's say we receive a signal R of n. 
you can use your commutator again. Okay. You take your L samples here and you throw them away. You just uh, discard them, those cyclic extensions. And now the remaining, okay, 2N now goes through a 2N point DFT. All right, so the, what ends up happening is then we get t 2N endpoints. And remember, this is not really 2N because um, recall that the DC term and the nth term are actually uh, uh, don't care as anyway. Then we, we recombine these guys, okay? Because we have a complex conjugate and the original, we recombine it such that we get, so that's 2N output here, but we get N here, you demodulate it, and just like the commutator at this end here is your serial to parallel converter, you have a commutator here that parallel to serial converts back into a reconstructed version of X, which is great. One thing I forgot to, to, to bring up is somewhere between uh, this this conversion process. So we, we, we basically go from 2N uh, 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 channels, subcarriers, to N subcarriers. At some stage here, we also do subcarrier equalization. Equalization. So spectrally, how does this look like? As we'll see a bit later, um, you, you'll essentially every subcarrier is going to look like this. So this is across frequency. That's subcarrier one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on and so forth. So this is across the frequency domain, and this is OFDM's advantage. Okay, as we'll see in a bit. Okay, so now that we have a conceptual understanding of how OFDM works, let's look at the math. And, and in this case, what we're looking at is um, not quite, like this is one version of OFDM that some folks use where we, we feed into the, the, um, into the IDFT uh, 2N rather than N inputs, even though we have N subcarriers. And what we're doing essentially is we're feeding into the first top half um, we're feeding in um, the original complex valued n subcarrier data into the first top half. And then the second half, it's actually the complex conjugate and it's in reverse order. And why do we do that? Because what we want at the output of the IDFT are two n real valued outputs. And so by doing this operation, we can accomplish that and at no loss of information whatsoever, except at the zero and nth entry to the IDFT. So like what we see in equation one here, what we're doing is every corresponding complex sample at, at, on each subcarrier across all the subcarriers, we take an instantaneous IDFT across all of them at the, all those samples at that same time across all the subcarriers, okay? So every time instant, we take a whole bunch of samples across all the uh, subcarriers, take the IDFT, produce these real valued outputs, and then we parallel the serial convert it. That is our OFDM symbol. And that gets sent over the air or over the copper twisted pair or over the fiber optic cable until it's picked up by a receiver that does the exact op opposite operation. It takes the information, serial to parallel converts into two N um, uh, elements, which then get D, uh, are fed into a two N input DFT or discrete Fourier transform that gets converted back into uh, the two uh, N complex outputs and then through some, some processing, we can get the original, the original um, N subcarriers that we had at the transmitter, okay? So this is great. So we basically have essentially a framework here that uses these very simple um, uh, conversions between the time and the frequency domain in order to, um, to re reposition the data from the time domain into the frequency domain representation of an OFDM composite signal. But what makes OFDM so special? Well, 
there are several things, okay? Even over a generalized multi-carrier implementation, uh, OFDM is, is, is quite nice because, first of all, you have spacings between each subcarrier that are only one over T apart, which is phenomenal because what happens is this makes our um, OFDM spectra even more efficient than most multi-carrier implementations because it, unlike uh, a lot of the um, generalized multi-carrier implementations, OFDM has a lot of over overlapping subcarriers and we can still separate them out because each subcarrier are orthogonal or 90 degrees out of phase with each other. So that's very powerful. So it's very spectrally efficient. Now, uh, the other thing is that what happens is when we have this um, um, uh, the, the, these implementations for OFDM. I mentioned about computational complexity. Well, what happens is, we, as I'm going to mention a little bit later, we can implement the IDFT and the DFT using the fast Fourier transform, or FFT, and the inverse fast Fourier transform, or IFFT. And these are really, really computationally efficient algorithms that there are a lot of like IP cores, if you implement these on FPGA or software programs or ASICs, that these come right out of the box and they're very cheap to do. That's why industry loves OFDM because you just take this product out of the box, plug it into your radio and ta-da, you have an OFDM implementation with minimal customization. So that's what makes this so great. So how does this OFDM signal look like in the frequency domain? So let's take a look at that. So let's look more closely at an OFDM spectra. So it turns out that if you try and represent um, an OFDM transceiver in terms of analysis and synthesis filter banks, it turns out that each subcarrier is being filtered by a sync pulse, both at the transmitter and at the receiver. And, and there's some very beautiful properties because of this. So let's look at this more carefully. So let's say this is the center frequency location of every Sync, uh, sync pulse that corresponds to a subcarrier. So the frequency here, each one of those little ticks represents a subcarrier. So what ends up happening is let's say that's the peak. That's of a desired center frequency location. So let's say that's F1. And it looks like a sync pulse. So it goes up there. Oh, it should have gone a little higher. And then notice how the zero crossings of my OFDM signal looks like afterwards. Let's say that, that we draw the next subcarrier at F2. Now let's do F3. Isn't this beautiful? Check this out. Look, look how I'm drawing these sync pulses. Essentially, at the desired frequencies, it's non-zero. So if we sample in the frequency domain, each one of these subcarriers, we get a non-zero contribution of the desired signal peak, right? And every other signal does not it essentially hits the zero crossing at that exact same instant, just like in a regular sync pulse. This is beautiful. Also notice that we are we are extensively overlapping subcarrier spectra next to each other. And that's also very powerful. So, so, so the first thing is zero crossings at center frequency locations. Locations. And then the second thing is um, uh, extensive spectral efficiency. And that's because we are overlapping extensively in, in when we transmit OFDM symbols because each subcarrier is essentially orthogonal to the other. So we can almost go up to where the the uh, like uh, sort of like uh, as much as to the next subcarrier uh, subcarrier sender frequency our own signal overlap extensively and not ha cause too much interference, which is very powerful. So th those are th that's those are two major advantages for an OFDM trans trans transmission. So one of the beautiful traits of OFDM and multi-carrier in general, but OFDM in particular, is this divide and conquer approach. Okay, so, so 
you might wonder, like, why do we go through all these hoops and hurdles of implementing these complex uh, serial to parallel and parallel to serial conversions, go between time domain and frequency domain and make composite waveforms and such, when I can just transmit this signal at a high data rate right across the channel and use the same bandwidth? And the answer is, again, that divide and conquer strategy, that paradigm that uh, really governs OFDM and multi-carrier transceivers, it's this idea that um, equalization, when you do it in the time domain on a very high speed data transmission, it can get very complicated. You might have to resort to adaptive equalization techniques to take care of like lots of data coming in very quickly that are very susceptible to the environment around you. Um, on the other hand, multi-carrier modulation and OFDM in particular carves up the spectrum and, and the transmission into N subcarriers that are essentially narrow band transmissions, each with its own narrow sliver of the frequency band to deal with. And we can approximate each portion of the multi-carrier, the OFDM transmission, as its own signal that can be treated in a, in a sort of isolated fashion for each one. And that can lead to a lot of very efficient utilization of uh, radio resources when we try to equalize every subcarrier separately. And so this is really powerful stuff. So what do I mean by frequency selective fading and, and such? So let's let's look at that a little bit uh, before we continue with the uh, setup of this of this formulation. So how does multipath propagation work? Well, suppose we take an indoor environment because that's where it 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 can be very pronounced. And we have a transmitter here. We have a receiver here. And what happens is our signal, if these are omnidirectional antennas, we have the line of sight one, and we also have a lot of reflections of the same signal bouncing off the walls, um, maybe several times. And so what happens is, how do we translate all of this? Well, what, the, what this will look like is the following. So suppose we transmit a T0, because the electromagnetic waves propagate at the speed of light, which is finite, we have some time between the initial transmission until it reaches the receiver. And that's going to be, let's say, T1. And that's interesting. That will be the line of sight component. And we can say that uh, like, if we convolve, let's say, our original transmitted signal with, let's say, this delta, you basically recreate the line of sight component that gets received first. But what happens is, uh, suppose there's like some scattering around the antenna here or here, we might get other copies. So what we get is a cluster of rays. And what this cluster means, like let's say we convolve this now with our original signal, what you get is some sort of echo. And that makes sense because you get the original copy plus a few scattered versions that are a little bit weaker because they took a little longer to get there. They bounced off some surfaces, so they lost some of their energy and such. And as a result, uh, we get this sort of profile. Now it's interesting because then we have all these other paths and their uh, reflections too. So we now get something like this. So, so the, the line of sight component should have the largest value, but we have other reflections, let's say these other clusters that are coming off from the other reflections. And so we get this sort of, um, sort of like delay profile characteristic. So that's our delay profile. And this, this echo, this reverberation, this multipath propagation, we can model this as an FIR filter. And in fact, what we call this is the channel impulse response or CIR. And this, this, if you put this into MATLAB or something and find this frequency response, it may look like a frequency selective fading channel. And, and that's bad news because what happens is over frequency, that means different portions of the frequency contributions of your signal will be attenuated differently. And that sort of distortion can only be corrected with using an equalizer. So now we know how multi-path uh, multi propagation behaves and creates these frequency, uh, d uh, frequency selective fading channels and such. Like equalization, why do we need equalization? Well, um, equalization, if it's done right, uh, we can undo the distortion introduced by these channels and these reverberations, if you will, in, the, in these uh, transmission environments.
So mathematically, what this looks like, and as I drew before, is that we can carve up the frequency selective fading channel into uh, narrow portions that correspond to the bandwidths of the individual subcarriers. So we carve this up so that in the end what we've got is an individual magnitude, CK for subcarrier K, and phi K, the phase of that uh, uh, frequency selective fading channel at subcarrier K. And so what we do is when we have the received channel, we have these gains, and all what we need to do is invert it somehow. And in and and multi-carrier modulation, that's um, relatively straightforward because what we can do, as we'll see, is if you want to counteract the selective uh, frequency selective fading channel, let's go into frequency domain. Let's convert all of this into frequency domain anyway because that's what the DFT at the receiver does. It takes the composite OFDM waveform and converts it back into frequency domain, which means that each subcarrier is essentially attenuated by the channel uh, gain across it by the uh, frequency selective fading channel by CK and manipulated by the phase phi K. So all I really need to do is by equalizing, I'm essentially dividing my subcarriers by the magnitude of CK for every K subcarrier in order to undo the effects of the channel distortion. Um, so, th th which is great. That that makes a makes it for this makes it for a great equalizer design. But there are problems, as we can see in equation four. We have this NK prime. What happens when we try to undo the effects of the distortion, we also, um, in many cases, enhance the noise. So what we may want to do is some sort of pre-distortion at the transmitter. That way we don't enhance noise at the receiver. Okay, so in the last portion of this lecture, um, so we, we talked about computationally efficient implementations of this multi-carrier uh, approach. OFDM by using uh, DFTs and IDFTs, which can be in turn implemented using very computationally efficient designs called ID IFFT and FFT, the inverse force, fast Fourier transform and the fast Fourier transform. And so again, like um, we have this formulation, it looks great, right? So we have we have these um, the, these IFFTs and FFTs. And, and we use them at the transmitter and receiver. You can get these things off the shelf. And um, essentially what you can do is, let's say if you uh, have a complex input, let's say we have N subcarriers, not the two N. So we have no constraint on what the output of the IFFT or FFTs are. Uh, you can take QAM, which could be in some sort of complex baseband rota uh, notation, and you can sort of feed it into the um, IFFT and the FFT, and you get the corresponding time domain representation or frequency domain representation, depending on which one you use, and you do your parallel serial or serial parallel conversion to transmit your composite OFDM waveform. But, you know, so the math is the same as the IDFT and the, um, and, and the DFT, well, with respect to fast Fourier transform in its inverse. But what makes the IFFT and the FFT so special is the FFT butterfly. Because with the FFT butterfly, we instead of using the summation expressions that we just saw, what we can instead do is we have this very elegant structure of multiplies and adds uh, that are sort of set out in a, a sort of stages of lattices that when combined together, uh, the order of complexity is actually much less, especially when it's base two, relative to just doing brute force um, sum and multiply by complex exponentials like the DFT and its inverse. And so let's see what this looks like. So let's look at an FFT butterfly. So the building block looks something like this. And it depends if you're doing decimation in frequency or decimation in time because there's several types of those. So in general, like suppose we take this, this guy here. And so we have a couple of adders. And then we take what's on this branch and put it added there and put it there. So you can see that uh, where we get this sort of profile uh, for the butterfly. Okay, so that's our FFT butterfly. It looks like a butterfly, right? And of course, then let's say over here, we also put a, a, a multiplicative factor of e to the j 2 pi i over n. 
And so what you might say, okay, so this is our basic building block, but how do you use it? Well, what you can do is let's say you have a four input um, FFT, right? What you may want to do is you take, let's say one guy, and say, okay, I'm gonna do this and this, and then let's say you take him and take him. So you have these parallel realizations, which is great. So you, this could be like your basic building block, and from that you can create this, and then from there, then, oh, I can actually then do, let's say that, that, and therefore what you've got essentially is you, you've, you've constructed sort of like these multiple layers of of FFT butterflies in order to implement, in this case, let's say this is your four-point FFT using FFT butterflies.